What's up fellow collectors, JCM45 here, coming at you with the first action figure review of the new year. I know it's a little late, but today we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashi Nations SH Figure Arts Bardock, father of Goku. This is a pretty exciting release, so let's take a look at the box and then we'll get him out and take a look at the figure. First off, we've got the box here. It's your standard SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z packaging. You have some promotional shots of Bardock here with some, with some of his energy effects. SH Figure Arts, Bardock. You got the Toei logo right there, proving that, yes, this is a real figure. Or this is a non-bootleg. You got another Toei logo there. You got Dragon Ball Z, Bandai Tamashi Nations, and then the Blue Bandai Spirits logo. On the side of the package here, you just have another window here with just Bardock's name and some SH Figure Arts logos on the back. You have SH Figure Arts Bardock, some more promotional shots in various poses, some Japanese here that I cannot read. You got your barcode. Flipping on over to the other side, you once again get more promotional shots of Bardock himself. Nothing special on the top here, just a quick promotional shot. And kind of the same on the bottom, nothing super spectacular. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the packaging, let's take a look at Bardock. And here we have Bardock out of the package. He's looking pretty good. This figure is based off of his appearance in the TV movie Bardock, Father of Goku, which was a flashback that was produced around the time of the Frieza saga, where Goku and Frieza were fighting on Namek, to kind of give a little bit of backstory to the Saiyans and Frieza, as well as Goku's parentage. And... As you can see, he looks a lot like Goku, obviously. And I'm pretty happy with this figure and how he looks. He looks really good um, when looking at him compared to the source material that he's based off of. I am pretty happy there. They did a very good job sculpting and paint-wise. I just have a couple complaints here and there, which we'll get into. So we'll, take, we'll start by taking a closer look at the figure here. We'll first take a look at the head sculpt. And this is the head sculpt, the face that came out of the packaging. And it looks really good there. I'm really pleased with the scars and the bandana and the scouter. They were, they're all very accurate. It is a generation one scouter, which is slightly different from the one that Frieza, or not Frieza, well, Frieza and the Ginyu Force use on Namek, as well as the scouters that the Saiyans use when they come to Earth. They're all slightly different, and it's nice that Bandai actually paid attention to the detail there. Moving on over the bandana there is also good. That is a separate piece. We'll get into that uh, when we go over face swapping, but the bandana is a separate piece there that you can swap between the various faces. And the hair sculpt itself is also good. It seems to be very similar to the standard kind of Goku head sculpt we've been our hair sculpt we've been getting over the years, but I do think there are some slight differences. Um, and we will, you can kind of compare, we'll compare those later on to take a look. Um, there, uh, This front piece is, they do have a separate piece here, as the scouter is also removable, and you can swap it with a separate kind of ear piece it comes with, and we'll take a look at that later. Moving on down to the body there. The armor there is a nice shiny material, which I believe is accurate to how the armor looked in the movie, which is great. Um, the green here, however, I have seen complaints online that it is a different shade of green, and I'm, I'm unfortunately colorblind, so greens are tough for me. But I do believe that this is accurate, that it, they are accurate, those complaints are valid, because I do believe this is a bit more of a darker green in the movie than in than the figure has but it's not a big enough deal to me to really care and honestly it was something i wouldn't have even known unless pointed out to me so that looks pretty good the arms are done well they have a nice skin tone there and some good sculpt work there you can see the muscle definition his little uh what are they called, like gloves or little sleeves there he's got are a nice red 
He's got his brown tail here at the midsection, which is a separate piece. It is plugged into the back and it's not removable there, but it is a f but the rest of it is a floating piece, so I think it's to get out of way of articulation and whatnot. I'm not really super sure why they didn't just kind of mold it on like they did with uh, Nappa, but it's fine. No problems there. Side skirts are on a hinge there, just like um, Nappa's and Vegeta's are. And his pants are a nice black. They're fairly matte, so not super shiny there. Can't complain. Fairly basic. Going on down to the boots, the same kind of red material as the sleeves as to match. And then we have the black, gray, and the white on the bottom look in there. And it looks pretty good in my opinion. I think they did a really good job. I can't really complain too much. Like I said, the wrong shade of green doesn't bother me enough to warrant a complaint. Okay, next up we have articulation. And Bardock's head is on the standard ball and hinge system like most SH figure arts are. You can kick it up about that high. You can bury the chin about that low. You can rotate it a full 360 degrees around. Just be careful of the chin getting caught on the shoulder pads. He does have some tilt. The neck is also on a ball joint, however on mine it is super tight, and so he can look down with the neck about that much, can look up about that much with it, and like I said, he does have some tilt with it, but mine's really tight, I don't want to stress the ball peg for the head there too, too much. Moving on to the shoulders, that is also on a ball and, ball and hinge system. And so you get some good rotation and up and down there. And if you kick it all the way up like that, you can actually bring the arm fully down. Uh, there is a butterfly joint on the back, as you can see. It's pretty good, so you can bring his arm forward. The hinge allows it to kick up about that high. Not great, but passable, serviceable, I guess. He can rotate it 360 degrees around. There is a bicep swivel which mine are pretty tight, so please be wary of that. Mine are really tight. And it kind of moves around a little independently of this joint here. So I'm a little kind of concerned about that. There's some more little QC issues here and there with this guy that we'll get into. Moving on to the elbow, it is a double elbow that kicks way more than 90 degrees. And his wrists are on a ball and hinge system. Another QC problem with mine, this one's uh, wrist is frozen. I can't articulate it. This one I can, fortunately. It does work, but this one I haven't been able to work out yet, and so I'm gonna have to probably try to heat that up or do something. The wrists are very, very thin. I'll pop in a hand off here so you can see. The wrists are pretty thin pegs there, so I'd be very wary and very careful of those. Wouldn't want to break them. Moving on to the torso, it's on, the abdomen here is on a ball joint, or a diaphragm joint here. He can look down about that much. He can arc back about that far. He's got some tilt, and you heard it there, that's one of the other, another QC issue. He's got some rotation as well, is my joint is super tight in there. Fortunately, well, fortunately and unfortunately, one of the issues I do have is when you arc back his diaphragm joint all the way like that, it is super duper gappy, and it does not look good. I mean, there's not going to be too too many jo positions where he's going to be in this in this kind of pose, but it is what it is. Fortunately, though, I'll be able to easily kind of work in some sh silicone shock oil to kind of loosen up that joint to fix it there, because it's a little it's it's too way too tight for my preference. And uh, my Captain Ginyu is actually very similar, has the same exact issue on the same joint. And this is pure speculation, but I think it has to do with the type of plastic used for the torso and the armor here because it is a shinier kind of material. Now, I don't know if it's the plastic that's shiny or if it's a shiny finish on it or what, but it's kind of the same look that Captain Ginyu has and it's the same issue that mine does. So I'm that's pure speculation on my part. Take it with a grain of salt, but that's kind of my my guess as to what's going on. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. It is what it is. I'll, of course, remedy that hopefully with some shock oil. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. <clears throat> Moving on down to the waist, 
That is also on a ball joint. It can kick it up and down about that much. It can rotate. And as you can see, the side skirts are on the same piece as the, as the torso. Those are actually on a hinge. You can kind of see that there. And once the arms out of the way, they can go up about that high, which is pretty good. So that you can get some good range there with the legs. Actually, moving on down to the legs, he does have a thigh swivel. Not super tight on mine. Mine are nice and good. He can kick up about that high. He can kick back about that far. And he can kick out. And he's got that, about that good of a spread. Not bad. Can't complain. He's got double jointed knees. And the traditional kind of ball and hinge for the ankle. Or not a ball and hinge, but a, a dumbbell joint for the ankle. It can kick up about that far. It can kick down about that far. It's got tilt and a toe joint. Next up, we'll be taking a look at Bardock's accessories. First off, he comes with four faces, three sets of hands, one separate hand, a couple hair pieces, and an interchangeable scouter and ear. We'll take a look at the faces first. The first face we get is the one that's out of the packaging, and that's just his kind of serious uh, neutral face there, and that's looking pretty good. Bandai did a really good job with the details there. Now the, this bandana here is a separate piece, like I said. It just pops off like so. It's got two holes on the bottom. And that can go swap on to any other face you'd like to put on. And that's just, just a little behind the camera action there. There we go. Hard to line up, but I got it. And so there's the shouting face. That looks great as well. Bandai's been really hitting it out of the park with these face sculpts on the Dragon Ball figures lately. I feel like these are the best they've been in a number of years. Next up we have the teeth gritting head, or the great teeth gritting face rather. Also looks great. And last but not least we have a smirking face. Because Bardock had a little bit of an attitude and we all enjoyed that. And those just kind of swap on like any other kind of face does. Also, the scouter here is a separate piece, as you can see. And it will plug into one of these ears, any of these faces, like so, into this hole. And then there's another peg on the back that will plug into the hair sculpts to kind of hold it in place. And so that looks fine. He also comes with an ear to swap out if you don't want to use the scouter. And it plugs in in a similar fashion, and this is a little bit more difficult because it's kind of a smaller piece. But that plugs in like so. I think I have it backwards, I do. And it's kind of hard to tell which side is which. You just kind of have to figure it out and finagle it in there and it'll just kind of fit in like so. And there you go. Sorry if you didn't see that, that was probably all off camera, but oh well. Just kind of plugs in there, like so. And it also has the plug in the back to the plug in the hair sculpt. Now I'm not a huge fan of this just because it does leave this pretty ugly seam line on the face if you have the ear so it, it is what it is I guess it's the best solution to it. I would have kind of preferred alternate faces with a scouter that had a notch kind of like Vegeta where it kind of covered up the ear but it is what it is. You also get two hair sculpts. This one here is the one that comes out of the box. This is the one that is meant for the scouter. And this one here is slightly different. This one is meant for the ear. So that's the only difference I can tell with these is one can accommodate the ear and one can accommodate the scouter. I think there's a piece like cut off here kinda for the scouter. Also, he's got a pair of flat 
open hands. A pair of kind of gripping Kamehameha hands. A pair of fists that come out of the box. And as well as a energy bla a kind of energy grabbing hand with a hole in it, which is for this last accessory that I almost forgot about, the spirit ball effect, which is his signature attack that he uses against Frieza. Now, I think we've seen this sculpt several times before. It's very similar to kind of the other energy ball effects we've gotten. So I'm not 100% sure if it's new or not, but it does have a peg there on the bottom. And I do like how they do this. And it just kind of plugs in to the hand, if I can line it up. Got to do this behind the camera so I can see it. And there we go. And it's holding the hand, holding the energy effect. So, cool. And those are Bardock's accessories. And here we have some size comparisons. Here we have Bardock with the two Broly movie Goku and Vegeta's. Goku has a has a uh, Saiyan raised on Earth head sculpt on there at the moment. Vegeta's got his Super Saiyan God head on there. And then we also have the SH figure arts final form Frieza on the size there on the side there. So that gives a pretty decent size comparison for kind of the main people Bardock would be normally paired with. Looks pretty good. He seems to be slightly taller than Goku there. Maybe about the same size, kind of hard to tell, but can't complain. Looks good. And then finally, as usual, we have our Marvel Legends Deadpool on the Bucky Cat mold and your Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper. And so my final thoughts on Bardock are while he is a good looking figure, my copy at least is kind of a mess of quality control problems between one of the wrists being frozen, the diaphragm joint having some squeakiness to it, the biceps being super tight. I don't know. I mean, he's he's a pretty decent figure. I'll give him that. He looks good. He looks really cool, especially in like this kind of pose. He looks great, but I don't know. He's kind of a quality control mess, or at least mine is. I wish it wasn't the case, because I really like Bardock. I think he's a cool character, and I really like his last stand against Frieza, at least in the original version. So I do think he looks good, but my quality control issues are not really up to Bandai's usual standards in my opinion. I feel like they usually are a lot better than this and I don't know what happened so it kind of is what it is. Like I said he looks good. I don't really care too much about the green on his armor being the wrong shade of green being a little too light. It is what it is. It's not something I'm ever going to notice or care about unless like I stated earlier earlier I was pointed it was pointed out to me so his accessories are okay. He's it's cool that he comes with an, with an energy effect. We don't really get a ton of those anymore outside of P Bandai releases, it seems. So that's really nice. And other than that, I guess I can't complain too, too much other than the quality control gripes. But yeah, so he's a good addition to the Dragon Ball shelf. Um, just be wary of all the QC problems. I'm very curious to see if everyone else is having the same problem. So. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Do what you guys normally do. And I'll see you next time.